Okay, so we'll get started with uh, our second lecture here. Again, I'm going to write some notes. And these notes, I'll provide them to you. You can write your own notes, or you can take my uh, notes at the end of the day. So we'll cover Facebook today. topic Facebook we're going to look at basic to intermediate maybe even a little advanced stuff regarding Facebook so uh, Facebook I'll take that back over here Charles uh, so Facebook is the biggest social network out there measured by user base does anyone know maybe how many people use Facebook any numbers? Maybe a hundred million? Does that sound real, realistic? A hundred million users? It's higher than that. Five hundred million? Nope, it's higher than that. One billion? It sounds really, really high. No, it's actually two billion. So, two billion people in the world use Facebook by their measurement and uh, that means then that that's a lot of potential customers to reach obviously the population of the US on its own is about 330 million that doesn't mean that every single person in the US is on Facebook but 2 billion people all over the world is a lot of people so Facebook biggest social network in the world ATM at the moment. Probably it will continue to hold on to that title because throughout the years there have been many supposed Facebook killers. A new social network that is going to be better than Facebook and take over and they haven't. So it behooves us then to know about Facebook because we have such a big uh, art audience that we could reach. Uh, most people use Facebook for uh, a little bit to a long amount of time and there's basically quote-unquote everyone using Facebook every age and demographic and such so if people come in and they ask well I don't have time or I don't have a budget and where do I get started there's so much to do what what's the first thing to learn or where should I focus my energy to and I would say that the short answer is, is Facebook if you don't have a budget or the time to run your social media, your digital marketing, Facebook is the easy answer. So easy answer. So where should I put my business online? Or where should I promote my business? Easy answer. Facebook. Longer answer. where your customers are so the easy answer is get started on Facebook as we'll talk about today and you might find your audience the longer answer is okay well actually my audience isn't on Facebook perhaps my audience maybe I have a product that's for a younger generation or, or just a, a group of consumers that are not interested in Facebook sometimes when something uh, is cool and small and niche people like it and then when suddenly everyone's on it and everyone likes it then some people don't like it anymore and that's been happening for several years that younger people are going away from Facebook because it used to be the fun thing where my parents weren't at but then now my parents are on Facebook and now my grandma's on Facebook so then perhaps a demographic moves away from that and goes elsewhere like Instagram or snapchat or some new network that's gonna come out perhaps um, so depending on your target audience most likely you'll find them on Facebook 
um, the longer answer about where your customers are often means trying a variety of networks to find what works for you. So that would be going on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, etc., etc. So many networks out there nowadays, Google Plus, etc. And just by the numbers, it almost to some degree is irrelevant to be anywhere else. Just by the numbers, that's the one where everyone, everyone, quote unquote, is at. But we will see why it can be a double-edged sword, or we can see why it might not be the best place for your business. Last time we talked, everyone said what their business was and uh, what they're trying to accomplish. So uh, there was uh, someone's business that it was something about um, like wine, to wine country tours or tequila tours, something like that. Uh, that that might work better on, on Twitter or, or Snapchat or somewhere. Uh, even though you might reach more people on Facebook, it might not be the right people. So our goal for today is create a Facebook business page. The terminology of page, unfortunately, is so generic because we then say not a Facebook personal profile. Well, the word profile and page, to me, they sound exactly the same. And to most of us, they would. But technically, one is a page and one is a profile. You have a page for a business, and you have a profile for a person. And again, business is the basic keyword, but this means your nonprofit organization, your, uh, your artwork, your band, whatever you're trying to do online is your business. So we're going to look at Facebook business pages as opposed to Facebook personal profiles. When you create an account on Facebook, you agree to their TOS. Does anyone know what the TOS is? Terms of service. Terms of service. Whenever we create an account on Facebook or any network, we agree to their terms of service. Facebook is a service. It's a website. It's providing a service, a place to connect with people. So there are terms to use their service. Whenever you create an account on Facebook, you agree to their terms of service. If you violate the TOS, the terms of service, uh, violate, if you violate the TOS, you can be uh, removed from Facebook or any of the networks. They all have these terms of service. So buried in the terms of service that no one reads, but everyone agrees to when you sign up. Buried in there, it says you're going to use Facebook the right way. And the right way is that if you've got a business, you need to create a page for it. And if you're a person, you need to create a profile for yourself. And that's important because a lot of people accidentally create a business as a profile. That's wrong according to the terms of service. A business page has a certain use and certain features and they on their terms of service say we want you to create a page for your business so I'll show you how to accomplish that and I'll show you that if you did it wrong you can fix it because if you're in violation of the TOS you could get kicked out of the service and all that you've done in there will be lost and unfortunately a lot of times with these big social networks they operate under guilty until proven innocent. You did something wrong, you violated some rule, or you got reported or something, they're going to err on the side of caution and uh, punish you instead of figuring out what went wrong. And then it's very hard to then fix what went wrong. Whoops, I accidentally created the business page as a profile. 
it was reported, they shut it down, and there's no 1-800 number to call. And good luck on the email. And good luck on the help screen that, that walks you through the generic steps to fix a problem. So the point is you want to do things the right way as much as possible to not be violating their TOS to get kicked out. You can say here, it can be very hard to fix something that you did wrong. So try to do everything right. as much as possible. If you created a business profile, it must be converted into a business page. Are those the words that Facebook uses? Business page, business profile? Yes. And most social networks use that terminology as well. I'm going to create a business page on, um, on Google+, and I'm going to use a personal Google Plus profile. It's just that these sound so generic, page, profile, everyone mixes them up. I do too, accidentally. They're so generic. But really, a page is for business, and a profile is for personal. So our goal, create a Facebook business page. We'll also talk about setting up the Facebook business page to get views and results. Last time, I used two bits of jargon of terminology. What was the other word I used for views? Started with an I and ended in a impression. Impression, yes, impression. So impressions are the views. People see your stuff on Facebook. So we'll talk about how to get views, which are important. And then we will get results. And what was the other word I used for results? Sales. Sales, yes, but conversions, yes. Conversions could be sales so a like would be or a like. A like would be a conversion as well. Conversion? Yes, we, it would be a conversion because so they were... Conversion is what you put out and the like is the impression. Is, and the like, no, the, the like... Is the conversion? It is the conversion, yes. Because think about it in terms of anything where they are converted. They, they did not like the page before. They were not a liker of your page. Then they converted into a liker of your page. A sale is that they were they were a non-buyer and they got converted into a buyer so any result is a conversion but usually the best conversion is the sale Conver not conversation conversion so we'll talk about getting the impressions and the conversions in today's class how many of you have ever used Facebook before most people. How many of you have ever used Facebook as a business page? A couple of people. Okay. So we'll talk about how to set that up right now. So uh, short answer. You need a personal profile to create a business page. Uh, this is where people get very confused. I'm going to go to Facebook.com. I'm going to fill in the information for Victor's Bakery. Well, that's wrong. I'm creating a personal profile on the Facebook homepage. I'm doing it wrong, but it, it'll make it that obvious. There is a button down at the very bottom that says create a business page, but that will still have you log in or create a personal profile first. So a person first needs to log in to create a business page. People say then, well, OK, uh, do I use my personal email or my business email? It doesn't matter. All of these networks, they are tied to your email account. And you can use a personal or a business email. 
so whatever kind of email you want to use doesn't matter you just need to have a person uh, log in to create the business page people then say okay well then I'm gonna give my login information to all my employees no every employee is going to have their own login information so I'll write it down then we'll do it because it might sound a little confusing so any type of email account so you could have uh, I could have Victor's bakery at gmail.com or I could have uh, the boss at Victor's bakery.com you see the difference there one is from one of these free accounts Gmail Hotmail Yahoo Mail Cox Cable whatever and then there's the business one where it's something at the name of your business these gmails and all of that you can get them for free these other ones with your name you usually have to pay and there's a big range of prices so we can look that up later well I'm, I'm trying to zoom in and out oh, as okay. as necessary yes so the um, the personal or the business page um, I'm sorry the personal or business email either or will work for setting up a Facebook and then everyone that you wish to be a manager of the page can log in with their own account so you can set managers you can set managers to log in with their own email their own password and control the business page this is good for security if everyone was signing in with the same email and password and one person doesn't practice good cybersecurity they've compromised the whole account but because here a person could sign in with their own email and it's separate if one person's account gets hacked we can remove that person from the managerial position and the account is safe So here's our first thing that we'll do hands-on. Let's open up our web browser and uh, let's go to facebook.com and I'll walk you through this setup here. So in your web browser, we've got all the popular ones on here. Choose whichever you like. Let's go to facebook.com and then we'll be presented with the very first thing to do there. Go ahead and have a seat, yes. So we'll go to facebook.com and what you see at facebook.com the very first thing is either sign in on the top or sign up create an account. Mm -hmm. Well you don't want to do this part of signing up because this is for the person. This is a person, a personal profile. And then down here is the, by clicking create account, you agree to our terms. Tiny little letters there. But once we click create, we've said, yeah, we read it, we understand it. And most of us, no, have not read it. And most of us, no, we don't understand it until we accidentally break a rule. One of the rules is you will create the account the right way. If you scroll down a little further, perhaps, you might say, you might see create a page. But still, that is going to have you have it attached to a personal account so don't don't click on that don't click on create a page um, the way we'll do this is you'll get the best out of the class the more you can do this yourself the more hands are hands on you are and I understand if you if you can't remember your password or don't want to log in in our public lab that's fine just take notes and then do this at home but these computers have a software protection that everything that you do on our computer will get erased when you leave when the computer turns off it will erase everything so if you forgot to log out before I leave I turn off all the computers and all your stuff gets erased so 
Um, we will log in. You could create an account if you want. That'll take too long. But I would recommend just sign in with an existing account. Top right corner, sign in with your email and password. going to hide that in the recording for a moment. I'm going to sign in. So you want to sign in. Sign in to the Facebook. So again, the idea is you sign in with your personal account and then we will create a business page you don't create a business page directly really you want a personal one to create the business one and then we will add managers if you notice on my account I have over here my personal stuff and then I have my pages. I have these different businesses that I'm involved with. I have a big list of clients and businesses that I work with. I manage all of these Facebook pages, me and other people on the team. As I said before, uh, I teach this, but I'm also part of a business that we do social media for clients. So in my case, I see I've got different pages I can manage. You probably do not have this, but do you see on the top right corner, after you sign in, on the top right corner, you'll see a little triangle on the top right next to the question mark. When you click there, in my case, I have different pages to manage. If you don't have any pages, how do you think you can set that up? Create a page, yes. So this was there all along. Any person can create a page on Facebook for their business. It's been there up on the top right corner. Uh, the little triangle probably has an official name. I don't know what it is. I just call it the little triangle, the little Facebook triangle. But up there, this, this menu in that triangle has a bunch of options. And one of them is create or manage pages. So in our notes here, say to create a Facebook business page log in to your personal profile click the triangle at top right uh, to access the menu, select create a page. And we'll, th and we'll look at those steps in just a moment. But you can create one or 20 pages in your personal account. And we'll see will let someone else have access to it as well. So two or three or 30 people can have access to that business page so that everyone can manage it. Meaning, upload a picture, answer a question from a customer, add a video, all that stuff that we will cover. So let's give this a shot. When I teach this class, I recommend, even if you've already got a page, I recommend to create a new one so that you can learn the stuff we'll talk about, so that we can do it on a page that doesn't matter, so that then you can apply it eventually to your real page. So you can make mistakes and learn. Instead of doing this on your real page where everyone could see it, I'm going to say for everyone, even if you've got a page, let's create a temporary one together. A temporary one together, and then we can um, delete it later. So clicking on that triangle on the top right, let's click Create a Page.
You get a screen here. Create a page. Give your brand, business, or cause a voice on Facebook and connect uh, with the people who matter to you. It's for you to set up, choose a page type to get started. So we have these general categories right here. Local business, company organization, brand, etc artist, entertainment, all of that stuff. So um, our first thing to choose here is what kind of page do we want? And so most likely, most of us are going to choose either a local business or a company. Uh, the local business, however, is tied to a physical location. I've got a business on Main Street. So I would choose a local business because what I would need to do is fill out the information of a physical location. And notice how it also has a line at the very bottom, phone number. Well, that's for security. Because what's to stop my competitor from creating a business page in my name and putting terrible things? What's to stop them is that there has to be some verification that phone number there they they're going to check that that address exists and they're going to call that phone number to confirm this place exists so for us in the class at the moment if we're doing this together I would recommend just choose a company because it's not going to ask you for all that extra stuff and as I said we're, we're gonna learn how to use Facebook for business and then we can delete it this page attached to my personal I can delete it. Uh, I'll show you how at the end of the day. So if we're doing a company, we have a, a variety of categories to choose from. You can make this up to be whatever you want. Let's say I'm going to create a, a Facebook page for the company uh, Victor's Bakery. So I would choose a category related to food. Let's see what there is here. Yeah, you should keep that. Yeah, you should keep it uh, for for the rest of the class this week and next week, so you have something to work with, so you don't have to spend time to do it again. Um, I don't see any that sound exactly like for a food business. That's why local business would be the best, but I don't have a real location, so I'm just going to choose whatever. Health and beauty. No, that's for health. Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to choose that for the moment. I'll, I'll go with a retail company. That's even, even that's not quite there, but if I had a bakery, most likely it's on Main Street, so I would choose that. Um, I'm going to go with this one. So uh, then we've got a company name. Whatever we do on this or any of the networks, usually you can change anything about it at any time. So when we're setting this up, and let's say this was going to be for real, for my real business, I put the wrong um, category, I can change that later. So when creating... A Facebook page or any type of page on any network the information you provide helps you be found and can be changed at any time so we're gonna hit this several times as we go on helps you be found people are going to search 
and I want to be found. So again, we'll, we'll go into detail as the class goes on, but just think about that. Helps you get found, or helps you be found. But it can be changed at any time. So we set a category. This name is a non-unique identifier. That box that is there below the category is a non-unique identifier, meaning I can um, create an account on this step with a name of a business that already exists, or someone else can create a page on this screen right here with your name. If we all together, so don't do this, but if all together we did this, if all together we, we created Victor's Bakery, it would let all of us do it. Because this is a non-unique identifier. On a separate screen, we would have the unique identifier. Because what happens is, a new Facebook page has an has a URL or a web address of something like facebook.com slash pages slash Victor's Bakery dash gibberish. So a brand new account has what we write in that box plus some weird numbers. I want, most of us want, to have facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. <coughs> something short and memorable and pronounceable. Something that fits on a business card or a flyer. But you don't get this by default. You don't get the short name by default. I'll show you how to get it, but you don't get it automatically. Actually, you should set the username, which is the unique identifier. <coughs> you'll get, thank you, you'll get the, you'll get the address that is unique that no one else in the world, the other two billion users of Facebook, no one else can get that name. I, I'm the one that wants uh, facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. I don't want anyone else, even though there might be another Victor's Bakery in another state or country. I want to claim the unique name for my own business. The problem, of course, is Facebook has been around for almost 15 years now. And if you're just now getting the great idea to get on Facebook, your name might have already been taken, especially if it's kind of common. You know, Ed's Taco Shop. There's probably more than one Ed in the world with a taco shop. So your unique name might have already been taken. You'll have to settle for Ed's Taco Shop number two, or the Ed's Taco Shop, or original Ed's Taco Shop. You'll have to settle for a name that is not exactly what you wanted because someone else already took it. And unfortunately, you cannot take it from anyone else. These networks, Facebook and all of them, are very bad at the moment of releasing names that no one's using. Um, there's so many accounts out there that were created and are, and are abandoned. And no one's used them for years. But that name was taken, and Facebook won't give it up to anyone else. So. This is why um, you want to clean your name so no one else gets it. I'll show you how to do it soon. So we're still in that setup screen. I'm going to type the name of my business. Victor's Bakery San Diego. Just, I'll make this up again. You can make this up. Any category, any name, click Get Started. I've taught these classes for years, and I've had students coming in over and over. I've gone through hundreds of students, probably 
maybe a few thousand students going through all of this. And these networks, and the problem with teaching it is these networks change. These networks change the menu, where the button was placed, the sign-up process. So every once in a while this stuff changes, and this changed very recently. When I taught this like three months ago, two months ago, this was different. So you might see, do you also see a screen that says add a profile picture after me? If you do see that, good. If you don't, if it's very different from what I'm looking at, let me know. But here in the sign-up process, in this case, it's asking, it's asking me also or suggesting add a profile. Help people find your page by adding a photo. So we're going to have our own account on Facebook, and we're going to need a profile photo here. And then on step two, a cover photo here. If you don't get this screen, you will be able to set this in a different way. I'll come back to it. But this is for the branding of your page. And this is something that you should do. In the notes, I'll say, as soon as possible, set up the basic styling of your page. simply oh that's interesting they call it a profile picture too but again we're not creating a profile we're creating a, um, a a page a business page but that name is so generic it's saying profile picture but anyway we'll say here um, profile company picture as soon as possible, set up the basic styling of your page. Profile picture, cover image, or cover picture. Square graphic, rectangular graphic. I have to look up the exact dimensions, but this one is a square, and this one is a rectangle. And if your logo is designed as a rectangle it will crop it in a weird way so the edges of your logo will be cut off that will not look professional so you have to figure out how do I rearrange my logo so that it fits in a square and that usually requires some sort of graphics software so whoever made you your logo you'll have to ask them for a version that is square if your logo is a rectangle they're gonna have to figure out to add a little bit of empty space or padding in your logo for your social media so that your logo doesn't get cropped or stretched and looks weird and I see that so many times businesses upload their logo it's the wrong dimensions it gets either cropped or stretched it looks unprofessional in my case I don't have these pictures to work with so I'm going to skip but I can add these later when I get home. You probably don't have your pictures also, so you'll have to do it later. I skip this first one. Step two, the cover photo is a wide graphic that further advertises your business, that further is uh, branding for your business. So as soon as possible, you want to set them both up because it shows your business is legitimate and if designed well gets you impressions and conversions And we'll see how as we go on. So this again, as a, I'm going to say this several times as the class goes on, whatever you learn in, what, in one network, you often can apply it to another network. So what I'm talking about here in Facebook will also apply if you create a Pinterest, if you create a Snapchat and Instagram, etc. You want to create you want to add these graphics to your 
this branding to your to your page to your account they may look a little different uh, Twitter has a rounded rec a, a rounded square meaning it's it's a proportional square but the edges are a little round they do have a wide graphic as well um, snapchat has a circular one it's still in proportion but it's a circle so this uh, this goes for every network basically again here I'll skip because I don't have the graphic and eventually I get to my page um, the profile picture would go here the cover picture would go here here's a side note and a couple of things regarding graphics side note on graphics free graphics editing software you can go to pixlr.com have any of you ever used Photoshop uh, no one maybe a couple people uh, more people okay Photoshop so Photoshop is a big professional famous graphics editing software it's also expensive uh, so there is an alternative Pixlr pixlr.com pixlr.com is a website that for free you can uh, you can go to that site and use like a junior version of Photoshop meaning you can crop your graphics rotate your graphics add text make collages and special effects all for free you just have to ignore the ads on the page but I bring this up because it's it's been around a while I, I feel like I've I've used Pixlr for like 10 years and um, it is it can be complex when you want to do complex graphics but if you know a little bit of Photoshop here's like a free online Photoshop you don't have to download and install anything it works on Windows or Mac you just access it in the web browser if you log in it seems it feels in the gra and the uh, menus and such are very similar to Photoshop and you can do what you can do in Photoshop crop rotate collage etc well that assumes you've got some sort of graphics to work with in your business so here we've got free graphics for your business pixabay.com p-i-x-a-b-a-y.com pixabay.com so graphics the visuals of your business are very important having tasty looking food for my restaurant is very useful having well photographed you know dresses for my uh, um, tailor business is very useful having nice graphics for my business is useful and this is a website where you can get free pictures free high quality pictures for your business and I bring this up because this is like a side note to a side note about graphics that um, never steal images. Even though we can easily, you know, right click and then save a picture, even though we can go on, on Google or Yahoo or whatever and search for pictures and save them you should not I'll get I'll get into the detail about that in just one moment but you should not steal the pictures so going to a website like pixabay.com is going to be one of the better ways to do this question how many of you have ever heard about that one person yes you could but you see how that's very like secret knowledge so yes, if you do it that way, you could. But with a lot of people, they think, okay, here's a picture online, I'll just save it and I'll use it. You're gonna get into trouble. So if you go to a website that focuses on pictures that are okay for you to use, that's going to be a lot better. 
this is a big discussion about copyrights. Never steal images because they are probably copyrighted. The term copyright. You probably have heard throughout the years about the people that stole music and got sued for trademark or copyright infringement. They stole music and all of that. Well, images are like that too, because images have a value. If I told you, yeah, my phone costs $200, $500, $900, you'll probably believe it. Yeah, it's, it's the new phone, it's high tech, it's got a great camera, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's worth $200, $300, $500, this little thing, yeah, it's worth that, because it's a physical thing. But dealing with images, they're not real. They're a thing on a computer. You can copy and paste it. You can send it on an email. It's not real. I don't believe that image costs $100. Yeah, images can cost hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's a product like a physical thing. If I'm a photographer, I make my business, I make my money, I pay the mortgage by taking photos and selling those photos. So I sold this photo to this business. They put that photo on their website, and then you went right-click save. You didn't pay the original photographer. You're stealing it. And it sounds harsh, but it is true. You're stealing the photo that you didn't pay the original photographer, the original copyright holder. Copyright means the right to copy something um, that costs money and yeah an image can cost ten bucks five bucks ten thousand dollars so the short answer to the long question is you want to get photos that are okay for you to use and if you know the right way to search or the right place to search great but I want to guide people to this website here that's full of thousands of high-quality free images that are completely okay for you to use. Because what could happen when you do a regular search, a regular Google search or Yahoo search or whatever, you might get a beautiful image, but then when you um, try to use it like on the menu of your restaurant, it looks terrible because the version you downloaded was, was low quality. Pixabay has high-quality images. You can get images there that you can blow up to the size of a poster. You might not need that high quality, but you get a lot of good photos. So copyrighted photos are those that you did not pay for and don't have the right to use for any purpose. And I'm not a lawyer, but I do have the experience in this world of web and graphic design and, and marketing and such. And it's a lot better to be cautious about this because let's say I did borrow a great looking photo of a birthday cake from some website that I found for my own bakery. A great birthday cake, I put it on my site and then uh, eventually I get an email. Uh, base, best case scenario, the email says, "Please remove your photo from our, uh, please remove our photo from your site." Best case scenario. Uh, a worst scenario is, "Please remove uh, your my our photo from your site, and here's the bill for using it, like five hundred dollars." Worst or case scenario, worst case scenario, uh, please remove your photo. Uh, here's how much you owe us. We'll see you in court. And you'll say, "Well, how did they how do they know? How will they find out?" Again, instead of trying to fly under the radar, and it may never happen, you should. I would recommend you, uh, you be cautious and do it the right way to avoid this. I've had people tell me in these classes that we had this photo for a long time on our site for five years, and then suddenly I got a letter from a lawyer, and then I owe them $2,000. We got off lightly. So really, um, you want to use the right kinds of images. People then ask, well, I heard that if you alter it, 20% you're safe. Well, how do you determine what is 20%? Changing the color of a person's shirt? Cropping it to a certain point? Removing their, uh, removing the background? Well, in that case, you might as well create your own photo. That photo editing is complex. So um, I don't subscribe at all to the, just change it X percentage, or, oh, they'll never know, 
or uh, don't worry I uh, I know that this image is free uh, you should uh, be a hundred percent with your intellectual property that it's not violating copyrights because then it could be pretty detrimental monetary damages and all of that stuff yes it's really easy to uh, discover if someone's stealing your photo because you can search Google by picture mm -hmm. and it's you can also search it by copyright in that in metadata. the metadata yeah yeah, the, there's what's known as a reverse image lookup. You can search on the search engines with the picture, and the search engine will tell you, here's where the picture came from, or here is where it else is. So you could be tracked down that way. And you think, well, who has the time to do the searching? The lawyers do. That's what they're getting paid for. And then also an image by itself, the default is when you take a photo just about with any kind of camera, it's going to save a lot of information hidden inside of it. The date, the time, often even GPS coordinates. And, and often write oftentimes the the name of the person that shot it so yeah all that stuff embedded in an, in an image uh, can it can come back to you so sure exactly so. mm -hmm. so that's why when we get hired by these clients, one of the things that we sell them, not only can we do your social media, we can do your photography, we can write your text, because text as well. You don't want to borrow the text from some other bakery or some other realtor, because that can be searched and found and come back to you and, whoops, violated copyright. Text is also a copyrighted uh, thing, and, and uh, when we get hired, then we, we do all of the photography, or, um, original photography, and write the original content so that it's all theirs and that they're uh, legally in the clear. All of that was a side digression to another digression about setting up graphics. So square graphic, rectangular graphic, you want to add those to your page if it's a real page as soon as possible to be legitimate. We'll do one more thing then we'll take a break. In my case, as soon as I created the page it also pops up here. Now invite your friends. Attract new visitors and build your audience by inviting friends to like your business. So here it pops up to show me all of my connections from my personal account that I can click invite. So, uh, inviting friends and family to like your page is similar to a follow. We talked last time that we're always trying to get followers to all of our social media followers are our audience, our captive audience. Um, in theory, those that are following my business care about baked goods and cupcakes and cookies and all of that that my business is about. If I'm going to follow Nike, I care about fitness clothing and fitness lifestyle and whatever, so I'm going to follow Nike. I want to see their content. I've chosen to see it. I'm going to like their page. I'm going to follow, basically. So we're always trying to get likes and follows to our page. This says, invite your friends and family. So this is where you're going to find out who your real friends and family are. Because when you tell them, hey, Scott and Hydro and Patricia like my page, and they don't. OK, I see how it is now. Well, I would caution you about this. I would caution about inviting your friends and family. Depending on your kind of business, your, that friend or family member won't care about it at all, or won't like it, or won't be offended, whatever. That's one thing, sure. But you have to think, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? And maybe in the beginning a little bit, but eventually not. They already bought one thing for courtesy, and they're going to buy another, and another, and another. So in my own company, in the other people in my team, we often have the discussion, 
and, and we're all right and we're all wrong about should you invite your friends and family I'll tell you both of the arguments and then I'll tell you which one I my opinion is inviting your friends and family so a pro or a good thing about it and a con or a negative pro you build your followers which could increase your followers you can get friends of friends Facebook does a very good job of making a bunch of connections do you ever notice you log into Facebook and it said Janet liked this thing Bill is there well all of this stuff all of this activity is is gonna help you so if your friend did like your page the friend of the friend might become aware Facebook will tell them Janet liked Victor's bakery so I might get Janet uh, I might get Jill to like my page because Janet liked it friend of friend so I build more followers so I could spread out more I could go viral I could get more followers more impressions which could lead to conversions the con about that again is are you building your business on the backs of your friends and family and uh, that probably most likely for most of us no we can only sell them something so many times we can only convince them of something so many times most of the time we're going to be trying to get new customers all the time not our immediate friends and family are in our immediate group so it could possibly help you reach more people we will talk other ways to definitely reach more people so you, you could get more followers and over here you're annoying your friends and family they're seeing another ad they don't realize it's your business they ignore it they block it they don't buy the product that you swore that they swore they would have liked to buy and they didn't so I personally uh, believe this one I don't recommend this one I don't recommend that you click that invite button to your friends and family it might increase that number but if, it, if it's just a number uh, oh suddenly have 40 likes so many of my family members liked it 40 likes that doesn't mean 40 sales it doesn't mean even four sales or one sale if my friends and family don't want the product and other people in my team will say yes it is valuable do it do the invite because then the friend of the friend could like your page so there's no wrong answer here but I lean toward the no don't bother inviting your friends and family to your page close that Publish your first post. I'm gonna close that. I'll get back to that. We've got a brand new page to work with. We've got a lot of different screens and settings to look at. We'll cover it all. Um, we'll take our first break, however, and when we come back, we'll start to set up our page to start to get impressions to go toward conversions. It's, uh, any questions before our break? So that, that little camera there is that be able to access your photos? The one that's up here, yes. Um, if you've got photos on your computer, you'll be able to grab it, or you'll be able to, if you've got a camera in your laptop or whatever, it will activate it to take a photo that way too. Is there a place to put photos in your Facebook? Yes, and we'll be covering that after the break. Let's take our break. It's uh, almost about 7.10. We'll be back at 7.20, and we'll go on.